Well, we're here on the ice at Colonials Arena at the Army Island Sports Center. Matt Geico with senior defenseman Eric Israel from the Army men's hockey team. And we're doing something a little bit different here. We want to break down a few plays from the first half, three in particular. Eric, you played a part in three big goals, a couple of them last second goals in periods and one near the end of the game. All of them led to wins, so a pretty significant moments in the season. And the first one we want to talk about is one that was created right here, end of the first period against Niagara. We'll go to the videotape here and uh, show you what we're talking about. Starts with about seven seconds left and, uh, you know, right at the, at the buzzer. So you look, um, you got Kyle, the puck's thrown in the net. Eric goes below the goal line. Alex Roberts net front. And Kyle does a good job knocking the puck out of the air. But it's, uh, it's one of those things where you've got to get the, the players to realize the time of the game and that they're not going to be able to get the puck back down the ice. So let's just go up and go and hopefully come bang a rebound in. We were successful there. Yeah, I knew at that time uh, there was, it was had to be under, you know, under three to four seconds. And so it kind of bounced off the, board, the end boards. I got on my back end and you know, sauced it in front uh, for, uh, Hor uh, for Kyle Horseman right in front who uh, – you know, saw, I saw it in the air and he batted her right out of the air. <laughs> so kind of a low percentage play there, but really it's high percentage when it's that late in the period to send everybody to the front of the yeah. net. Five guys right around the cage. I'm sure it was a difficult time for Niagara picking guys up, and obviously they couldn't pick up everybody in yeah, front. Like I, uh, I just knew that there was only a couple seconds left in the period and just had to get the puck in front. And uh, we were fortunate enough for uh with his big body, just was right there to bat it out of the air. And, um, get us to tie the, tie the uh, game up at 1-1, one, one, and uh, you know, we ended up going in the third with uh, the momentum and you know, taking, taking the lead in the third. Yeah, that was a big goal. It, it helped get you to the locker room on even terms, and, and from there, you pretty much took over and uh, ended up winning that first game of the series against Niagara. Uh, Horseman's finish was a, a lot prettier than that, I know that yeah. much. He, that, that was, that's something that you can't quite factor in, but... Yeah. Um, Everything that led up to that was, was fundamentally sound, even though it looked like maybe to the, to the novice that you're taking a risk by being a defenseman behind the net, but yeah, not but, the case. Yeah, with coach, you know, our coaches, uh, school, he's always yelling, like, D go when he mm -hmm. sees the clock at, you know, eight seconds. And, you know, ever since I was little, that's how I was taught is, you know, you kind of, you get free range with eight seconds left. And, you know, as a defenseman, you don't get that much, uh, you don't get that often. So you, uh, you know, with those eight seconds, you take full advantage of it and you play to the, you played a little whistle, you played a little buzzer, and uh, you know we were fortunate enough to cash in on um, two of those uh, last last second uh, type goals. Cool. Well, we're going to go to the other end of the rink to recreate another one of those last second goals, uh, quite literally last second against Mercyhurst just a couple of weeks later. And that with that shot, and Eric's already there, knowing that um, if you even extend it probably a little bit earlier, that probably about five seconds we're exchanging and going down deep. Um, and we got people around the net, and Eric's there. We missed the net. Everybody's yelling from the bench at that point. I know for exactly they're yelling at shoot it. Um, for Giles, we get a, a bounce, and he knocks a puck out of midair from below the goal line and, and makes a, a great play. So. so I was kind of right here. Lynch uh, was in a – right around the, the hash marks right there, Lynch was in a one-on-one -on -one battle. He uh, ended up winning that battle. This shit off the ton, and I saw there was only eight seconds left. And so by the time the battle was finished, got the puck over the times, I, I ended up right around uh, here. Mm -hmm. And kind of just, I, he, Todd's passed to me, I kind of just spun it, didn't have much time, just got on that, which it ended up being blocked. But went out to Giles, um, right over, probably right on top of circles here. And Yeah, he's you know, about right here, correct? You know, and I, and I see Giles step into one thing and he's gonna get his first uh, college goal. Yeah, yeah. But he, <laughs> you know, he made the read. And according to him, he, he made the read and got it off the glass and- um, Oh, is that right? Okay, yeah. I didn't hear that explanation. Yeah, that's what he says in the locker room. And, um, so he shot it off the glass and I kind of just, you know, went to the front of the net where, you know, good, all good things come in the offensive zone when you stand there on the front of the net and uh, the puck uh, hit off the glass and kind of just went to my backhand like right around here and I kind of just chopped at it and it ended up like right right around stick level where I'm holding it and I just kind of batted it in some 
Yeah. Playing, playing baseball growing up, five paid off, so. Yeah, that is not your typical goal. Is that maybe the most unlikely goal you've ever scored? It was wild to watch, I know, live, and then especially after the fact on a replay. Yeah, probably the most, like, I don't know. Yeah, I've never had a one that I hit out of the air. I had some crazy fluke goals that have gone in, but mm -hmm. that's definitely probably <laughs> the most skilled, lucky kind of goal I've had. Yeah. Let's try to... Um, here, I'll, I'll shoot from over here and then I'll show you. I'll be gentle. I'll do something I'm good at, which is miss the net. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to the goal number three. Back there, he makes a, a very good individual play in the neutral zone by pulling the puck uh, from forehand and uh, around there. And if you. And, Eric drives the net, pulling this defenseman back. Um, it also allows this space behind uh, to open up. They don't do a very good job of, of coverage away from the net because at this time, you look, it's a three on five. Oh, the, the four checker come on my left hip mm -hmm. and I'm just kind of just trying to protect the puck where I was like this and I just spun around him. And uh, so I rushed the puck up. I, had, I knew I had Manny to my right, and so when I got over the blue line, I kicked it outside to him and kind of kept driving here. He made an unbelievable deke through a defenseman. Yeah, he gets around a guy here. Yeah. Tonj goes to the net. And Tonj, who started, he started back at, like, right around the dot, the, our, our dot. He skated hard, and you watch the video, there's all five guys are puck watching Manny. We just made an unbelievable move on their defenseman. And Manny and I, so I kept driving that here. Tons just snuck in behind their all five guys right back yep. door. And Manny uh, made a great pass with him. Tons, uh, you know, does what he does best and scores goals. You were talking about driving the net there. I believe a man goes with you. Is that part of your, your reasoning there? Is if they don't, if they don't pick me up, I'm there for a pass. And if they yeah. do, then at least I, I take yeah. a body with me. Yeah, exactly. You know, you try to create open space for like late guys like that coming in. You know, it's it's usually like the D that comes in late, but on that one it was Tonj. And so you kind of just drive the net to, to really suck, kind of draw focus on onto you and kind of let the late guys that are, you know, coming at, coming into the zone mm -hmm. to get, give them a little bit of extra room. And, you know, we were fortunate enough to have, you know, all five guys are sitting right at the puck and uh, that's a big no-no. <laughs> You know, and, you know, Tonj and Manny, Manny made a great pass to Tonj and, you know, just coming right to the back post there and, and uh, he buried it, which uh, helped us lead, go into OT, and, which was another nice goal. Yeah, a, a pretty important win in the, in the course of the season. It looked like you guys go from, from down one for, well, for the longest time, really, for more than a period there, and, and then you, you come back and tie it up and win it in overtime. Have a great memory. Thanks yeah. for helping out. No problem. With this sort of thing, you're one of the higher scoring D-men in, in the uh, in the league. Higher scoring D-men in, in college hockey as well. So uh, good to get some input from the expert. We appreciate right. that. Thank you. That's Eric Israel. I'm Matt Geico. We're going to have some more Colonials read and react videos. Hopefully, as the second half continues on, and we have some more plays like the ones we just went over here.